Okay, today, I don't want to read these because I know you know how to read, but these are the topics that we are going to cover for today. Here is the first one. Finding X and Y intercepts. The X intercept is where it touches the X axis. That's pretty simple. And the Y intercept is where it touches the Y axis. So if it's a picture, it's like a no brainer problem. You know, here's the Y intercept. Here's the X intercept. Interesting point, you can have problems that don't have a Y intercept, like this red line here. That's never going to touch the Y axis. It's got an X intercept, but not a Y. All right. But this is a really, really important thing. See the like warning sign there? Worthy of you memorizing because it comes up in pre-calc a lot also. The x-intercept is where y is 0, and the y-intercept is where x is 0. They, they, it kind of makes sense. Now, why do you care? Because a typical question then will be, here's a problem, what's its y-intercept? You can't just see it by looking at it, and do you really want to have to graph all of these to find the x and y-intercept? That's a long, slow process. And you got to be really accurate to see where exactly it touches. So there's a much faster way. And use that little statement about the x-intercept is where what? Y is 0. So for example, on this one, the x-intercept is where y is 0. I put a, a little empty parenthesis where y is, and I drop in a 0. And then that 7 times 0 drops out, and it's 2x equals 10. You see how easy that is now? What's x equal to? x equals 5. So on this graph, the y-intercept, which is where x is 0, I don't know that one yet. But I do know the x-intercept, which is where y is 0, see, because I just stuck it in there, is 5. Now, wait a minute. But the x-intercept is a point. So I'm actually not done yet. you got to actually put a point like this and say, oh, it's 5, 0. Pause for a second. All right, so... Don't forget that in the end, this thing's a point. So when you get the answer of 5 and the y was 0, then you got to put the x and the y together in a little point. All right. Take this one, and instead of figuring out the x-intercept, which was where y is 0, find me the y-intercept on this one. And remember to write it as a point. Write it down, turn it my way, and I'll tell you if you got it right or not. We are finding the y-intercept. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, glare, tilt, yep, 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 yep. Everybody gets this one. And why? Because it's one of the easy ones where the y-intercept's just sitting right on the outside there, isn't it? You just got to remember that if the y-intercept's negative 11, what is that really? Well. It's where x is 0, so 0, comma negative 11. And if I'm dropping in the 0, it would have gone right there. 3 times 0 would make it disappear, and y is negative 11. All right. So that's finding x and y intercepts. That's really easy. Next topic, parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines have the, what do you think? Slope. Same slope. Yep. Parallel lines have the same slope. And the... Slope of perpendicular lines are something. And now let me show you an example. y equals 3x plus 10. There's an equation. It's got a slope of 3. If you picture it, it's like something like this. It has a y-intercept of 10 and it has a slope of 3. So it's kind of like that. Maybe a little steeper. Okay. If I wanted to have something perpendicular to that, it would be running like this. It would make right angles. That line would have to be y equals something, and I already know the slope. And it could have any y-intercept, but, you know, I could figure out exactly what the y-intercept if I, if I want to be tricky. But two lines that have, that are perpendicular, you know, it could be up here, it could be here. It could have a lot of different y-intercepts. So I'm going to say plus 5 or whatever. What would have to be in the parentheses if these guys were going to be perpendicular? Do you remember? This is an ACT-type question. I'm going to throw that in a lot because I know what's on the ACT, and I know you need to take the ACT, and I know you want to do well on the ACT. So I'll throw in when I know these are ACT type questions, I'll throw that in there. Yes, sir? Uh, negative. negative one third, you are correct. And that is a opposite reciprocal. And I don't want to say negative reciprocal because if it starts out as a negative number, then you need to change it to a positive number, right? So it's the opposite reciprocal. 
and opposite reciprocals. For example, 2 and negative 1 half. All right, moving on. Writing equations of a line. So remember, these are the three kinds of equations. Slope-intercept is what you used the most in algebra. Standard form is used some, but not very much. And then an example would be like 2x plus 3y equals 6 or whatever. Don't use that that much. It's used sometimes for matrices problems. And anyway, it's got a few uses. But this one, this one's the one I need you to have memorized. Y minus Y sub 1 equals M times X minus X sub 1. If you haven't already memorized it, work on it. One of the things that's kind of cool about it is if you solve it for M, let me show you something. If I take this equation and I solve it for M, I get the M alone. I'm solving for slope. I'm going to divide by X minus X sub 1. Why? Because that makes this and this cancel, right? What did I just do? I just wrote out the definition of slope. M, which is slope, is the y's on top minus the x's on the bottom. This is the rise because the y's control the rise. This is the run because the x's control the run. So math all makes sense if you really see the big picture. All right, so if you had forgotten that equation, you could even just write out the definition of slope for yourself. And then solve it for M, or no, not solve for M. Get these guys to the other side, which means put them up here. And you've got the same equation as I asked you to memorize, except it's got its twos and ones a little different. And really, actually, this would be a perfectly good way to do this equation, too. It's just that you'd have a sub one left over in it when you're done, or a sub two left over in it when you're done. All right, good enough. Example, write an equation for the line given the following information. If the slope is a half and the y-intercept is 7, which of those three styles should I pick? Well, they gave me the slope and they gave me the y-intercept. So maybe I should pick slope-intercept since they gave me the slope and the intercept. Now, could you do it the other way? Yeah. But if they're going to give me the slope and the y-intercept, I'm going to write it this way. y equals, my slope goes here, 1 half x, and my y-intercept is 7. Plus 7. See how easy that was? Is there another way? You tell me the other way. Yeah, point slope. So if you have it memorized, it'd be y minus y1, m x minus x1. And you wouldn't have to write that whole thing out. You could just right away go put the slope right here. And then the y intercept, ooh, that's really a point, isn't it? which I could then put here and here. If it's really a point, the y-intercept is where what is 0? x, so 0, 7. Do you get how y-intercept is really 0, 7? So then I can just drop in the x is 0 right here, and the y is 7 right here, and I'd have y minus 7 equals 1 half x minus 0. And x minus 0 is really just x, right? So... There we go. And isn't that the same exact thing as this blue one? Now, I personally would have done the blue one because it's faster. But either way, it would work. Okay? All right, take a look at this next one. Here's a slope, here's a point. I don't recommend using point slope, the one I asked you to memorize. Y minus Y sub 1, that whole thing. Use it, try it, turn it my way, and tell me, show me what you think the answer is. Second here. Yes. 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 Still waiting for you. Did I get it already? Okay. Good. Good. Wait. Something's wrong on the outside there. Uh, good. Got your X's and Y's reversed. Uh, glare. Tilt. Good. No, wait. Your 2 is, uh, should be negative. And I think, I think you get your X's and Y's reversed also. Good. Good. 
good, except your simplification at the end was not right. Try again. Just leave it. Leave it the way it was before that. Uh, good. 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 And yours is in a weird green that's hard to read. Sorry. Good. Okay. A few of you had little tweaks to make there, but generally here's how I would have done it. Y minus, and then I'd slap the Y in there. Remember, it's the Y that goes by the Y. So Y minus the negative 2. Get what I did there? Y minus Y sub 1 equals M, which is negative 3, times X minus the X sub 1. What's the X? 1. There we go. Now that double negative should turn into a what? A positive. Other than that, that's it. Now, do you have to solve it for y? No. You can leave it just like that, and it's good. Is it nice to solve it? Well, it's kind of nice, but this is the same thing that happens on the AP test. If you want to go and put this in y equals form, it's fine, but if you make a mistake in it, they will count it wrong. You know what I mean? It would have been right right there. And if the kid goes and multiplies it all out and does something wrong, now you've lost the point. So don't want to do extra work that you don't have to do because you're at risk of making an extra dumb mistake. All right. This one. That's just telling you the slope in a different way. Try it. This time I'm going to call on a certain person in each row. Instead of looking at everybody, I'm going to look at like the second person in each row or whatever. So be ready. Remember, by number, doing number four, they were telling you the slope by giving you that equation. And now I'm giving you a slope and a point. By the way, I don't need you to do this. I just need you to write me the equation that you'd have. You don't have to solve it for y. All right, here's who I'm going to look at this time. Came up a 1, so I just want to look at the front row people. Can you turn and tell me, what, show me what you got? One more, I want to check quick. Yes. Your slope is off. Yes. That, uh, oh, you solved it for y, didn't you? Confusing me. I'm, I'm not sure. Let me look at this one. Okay. You also are solving it for something, and that's not what we're looking for. Uh, your slope is not correct. Okay. So let me uh, go through this quick. Oh, wait a minute. I know what was happening. Some of you were thinking... Uh, that it was perpendicular to, and you were doing like negative one seventh for your slope. Do you get the difference there? So if it's parallel to this, that has a slope of seven. It's that simple. Some of you were taking an extra step that you weren't supposed to take. All right. So it was. What's the formula? Y minus y one, m x minus x one, and then you should drop in a point of negative two for the x and negative 3 for the y, and a slope of 7, not one negative 1 seventh. That's, I was wondering why these people are doing that. Now I realize you were thinking perpendicular. All right, so it's y plus 3 equals 7, x plus 2, and not the negative 1 seventh there. And some people reverse these two by accident. Remember, this is the first, it's an x, but you don't put it in the first spot. The x goes by the other x. All right, any questions on that? How many would have got that right if I'd have called on you? Okay, good. All right, let's move on. This one's perpendicular to, and it's got the equation all jumbled up. So solve it first. Figure out what it should be for a slope. Then it's got a y-intercept, so right away I wouldn't use the big long form. I'd use this form. Because it'll be a lot faster. Tell me what you think this one is.
This time I'm going to just take volunteers. Turn them my way when you think you got it. Make it bigger. Yes. Good job. Your slope's off. Slope's off. Close. Something's wrong with your slope still. Man, unless I'm doing this wrong, let me double check this. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Nope, slope's upside down. Everybody's doing the slope wrong. Okay, either that or I'm doing the slope wrong. All right, hold on. Oh, it's perpendicular to. Ah, I wasn't flipping it over. Boo. All right, so, sorry. I better do this one myself. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I have 2y equals negative 3x plus 12. Sorry, I told a lot of you the wrong thing. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. y equals, I was thinking, why aren't they using negative 3 halves? And, wait, is there a negative in there? No, it's plus 6. I think, I think that's right. How many of you think that's the right uh, way to start, I should say? Okay, good. Then I need the slope from that, which is right here. But I want perpendicular to that slope, so I need to flip it and make it positive. So it should be y equals positive 3 halves x plus 6. I see. Yep. Two thirds x. And then let me make sure my y intercept is right. Okay. Uh, y intercept is negative 6, so there it should be minus 6. There. Okay. And then why did I use the minus 6? It's not like I took this and changed it. It's because they told me they wanted the y intercept to be negative 6. So I think that's my final answer. Raise your hand if you had the same thing as I had. Okay, good. Thanks for catching me. It is so easy to make a little negative mistake. All right, next one is called tables. These are super simple. You've done these before. This is from Algebra 1. It's from two years ago. No, let me think. Yeah, two years ago. So if they say x is 2, obviously they want to know what y is. So all they're asking you to do is slap a 2 in for x. Here's the x. Put a 2 in there. And now you've got to multiply it all out to figure out what y has to be. So it's y equals negative 3 times 2 plus 2. And that means y equals negative 6 plus 2. And that means y equals negative 4. So really, they're just saying, stick in x is 2. On this one, what are they saying? Stick in what? 8 for y. So do that and tell me what you get. Show it to me quick. Yep, 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 yep. Since nobody's got it wrong yet, I'm going to assume you probably all did it right. Negative 2. Negative 2. Why? Because if I stick in a negative 2 for the x, it will give me an 8 for the y. And I can double check that. 8 equals positive 6 plus 2, and 8 equals 8. It worked. All right, good. That's all there is for tables. You just take the number they give you, stick it in, figure out the other number. What you're really getting is a set of points. That's a point. That's a point. This next one will be a point on the graph. All right. And that's all we need to know for today's. So that was a fairly easy one. What I want to focus on for today is giving you time to do your homework. Uh, during that time, I'll get your scores on the homework. And I'm also going to ask you to play the name game with me, as in I'm going to ask you what your name is. I'm going to try to memorize it. And then we're going to go to the next person, and you'll have to tell me your name and the name of the person in front of you. I'm going to not make you do the entire class, because that's kind of cruel, unless anybody's really good with memory. Uh, but that's what we'll do for the rest of the hour.